Let's talk about fender benders. Hey, I'm Dave Swartz and welcome to another episode of Dose of Dave. So today I want to talk to you guys about my recent fender bender accident. Uh, I didn't cause it, wasn't my fault. Um, however, it was nevertheless something that happened to me, significantly impacted not only my day, uh, but my life. Um, and I want to talk about all those little things I learned along the way. Um, because when everything, something like this happens to any of us, we shouldn't see it as an opportunity to say, oh, woe is me. Why is the universe doing this to me? What the heck did I do? No, 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 no. This is an opportunity for you to ask yourself, what can I learn about myself? What has this opportunity created for me to be able to learn that I don't have to become trapped by anger. I don't have to become trapped by my, my fear. Um, I don't have to be trapped in that cycle um, of, of returning um, anger and violence uh, for anger and violence that is done to us. So let's talk about the story. So I and my partner and I were headed to the park uh, last Sunday. We were going to go to um, just have fun in, in the outdoors, um, get outside. You know, everybody has been kind of cooped up lately. Um, and in Michigan, we don't really have a whole lot of sun uh, during the month of January. So Sunday, we actually, Sunday, um, had an, a, a really nice day. There was sunshine all day long. Um, it was beautiful outside. It was actually not that cold. Um, it's quite frigid here in Michigan at the moment. Um, so we decided, hey, let's get in the car. Let's go to a park. You know, let's let's get out in nature. Um, so we're headed to the park. Uh, I'm in kind of a not so nice part of town. I'm about to get onto the freeway. Um, and we had just passed a pretty bad car accident. There were two cars that had seemingly collided in an intersection. Um, and it just happened because there was no EMS, no police or anything. So we were just passing the intersection. And both my girlfriend and I were like, wow, that's, that sucks. Like, man, I, I really, you know, my heart goes out to them. Um, and just after that, the very next intersection, I come up to it. It's a stoplight. I stop. Um, I rest my head back on the headrest. And just as I do that, bam, we got nailed from behind. Somebody was going like 15, 20 miles an hour. Um, but we, we just got nailed. It, it was something that completely, you know, shook me up. Um, I'm sure it shook my partner up. Um, I immediately knew what had happened. I flipped around um, and I could feel, you know, my anger, like just boiling on the inside. I was about ready to just bust out. And uh, just as I flipped around to kind of take a look at what had happened or, or who was behind me or who did this, we got hit again, you know, this, this, I don't know what was going on, but maybe, you know, he mistook the brake for the, uh, the ex or mistook the accelerator for the brake. You know, maybe he, you know, just didn't quite realize what had happened at first and his foot was just still on the accelerator. Not really sure what happened, but we got hit twice. And that second time is just like, oh man, my blood was starting to really boil. Um, and I could feel that, you know, I was about to get out of the car. Uh, my hand was on the handle. I was about to fly out that car. I had nothing but anger inside of me. I was I was so prepared to just tell this person off. And in that moment, I I stopped myself. I had I had a, a, a bit of a moment where I don't know if it was my brain or it was my heart, it's probably my heart. It said, Hey, you need to take a moment. You need to breathe. Because if you get out of this car super, super hot and you come at this person like that, you're only gonna escalate the situation especially in a not so nice part of town. So I, I took a moment, I took a breath. And unfortunately with that breath and in that moment, uh, it gave him enough time to take off. So it wasn't just a fender bender, it was a hit and run fender bender. Um, and it was kind of interesting because after reflecting upon it, um, he came just as mysteriously as he left. So I didn't see him at all. I was looking in my rear view the whole time. I, didn't, I had no idea where he came from. And then by the time we took a look around to, to see where he was, he was gone. He was completely gone. I was looking in every direction. I couldn't see a trace. So, you know, the, the I was a little concerned about my neck. I, I hit my head pretty, like I said, my head was on the headrest. So it, it got hit pretty good. Um, went to the ER just to get it checked out. 
Um, as I've talked previously in, in my Dose of Dave episodes, um, I, I have a, a tube in my in my head that uh, you know drains fluid from my brain. I have a cyst up in there, um, and it's it's still working today. So it's it's something that's really sensitive, and I don't want to screw around with. Um, so that's primarily why I went to the ER. Um, while in the ER, I think that's where I had the most transformative experience. Yes, I did take a moment to take a breath to calm myself down before I flew out of that car. And I was very happy with myself for doing that. But it was, wasn't until we got to the ER and I spent four hours in the ER laying in there um, where I couldn't really do much. I couldn't even really move my head much. Um, I just listened to all the people around me. And I listened to two people in particular. There, there was two people across from me. One person was a middle-aged woman uh, clearly in distress, um, physically and emotionally. She was wailing in pain, um, claiming that she just had excruciating back pain and that, and that the, the, the doctors and the nurses weren't helping them or her. her. Um, she just was throwing out obscenities one after another, um, clearly, clearly upset. Um, but what it seemed to me, because, I mean, you're in a hospital, so if someone's wailing in pain, somebody's going to help unless it's not really the case, unless this person is just trying to get drugs that they don't need. And that's what it seemed like to me. Um, nevertheless, my heart did go out to her and it made me think, man, things can be a lot worse. You know, life can be a lot worse. You know, I, I heard her on the phone. She was talking to somebody about how her boyfriend was abusing her, um, about how she hadn't eaten in days, how she was just trying to do what was right. Um, but clearly she had lots of physical problems, lots of mental problems. Um, and honestly, I, like I said, my heart went out to her. Um, but there's certain circumstances like that where you have to allow people to follow their own path and not try to dive into their trauma and to heal their trauma. Because as much as we all want to heal ourselves or our, each other, and we want everybody to be as, as safe and as comforted as, as what we want, the goal, I think, first is to heal yourself. And I was quite literally in a place where I was hurting and not really able, I think, to heal myself, let alone heal her. So the one thing I did get out of that encounter, though, is, I, like I said, it could have been a lot worse. My life in general could be a lot worse. So to have a Sunday that's completely thrown in the garbage essentially because I was planning on going out into nature, I was planning on having a great time outside and enjoying that sun, and I just instead spent most of my day in an ER bed. Um, the other person was a young man who had been involved in some kind of criminal act um, in a car. I'm not sure if it was high speed chase. I'm not sure if it was carjacking. Um, I wasn't sure if it was just, you know, he, they fled from a police stop or something like that. But clearly he had been brought in by the police. The police were right outside. Um, he had been handcuffed to the bed. And I could hear him talking about his buddy, you know, going to jail. So somebody who was in the car had already gone to jail. Um, and then I also heard at one point the doctor asking him why he needed a gun. This guy had a gun on him. It was amazing. It was just absolutely amazing to me. So to listen to these two people, each of them the entire time complaining about how they're the victim, about how everyone else around them is the cause of all their suffering, cause of all their pain. The doctors are, are not helping me. The doctors are, are torturing me. You know, the doctors won't let me do this. The doctors won't let me ha have a phone. You know, the, the guy who is probably going to go to jail was begging the doctors and nurses to give him a phone so he could call his girlfriend. With all due respect to people who are in that position, you need to understand that the universe is not against you. I took that moment to come back inside myself and remind myself of that. Remind myself that this fender bender, the guy who hit us, that is not a cause or a reason for me to play victim. I am not a victim in this situation. 
This was done to me as a way for me to understand more about myself, know who I am. And while I was laying in that bed, listening to all this chaos going on around me, I was filled with nothing but gratitude, honest to God. I felt as if I was lucky to not be in more pain. I was lucky to not feel as though I was suffering. I was lucky to have a loved one next to me, holding my hand through that entire experience, reminding me that I am loved, reminding me that I have support. Not all of us have that. And I think that's a very important thing for all of us to remember is that some people out there really do feel as though they are alone. They don't have a connection to the love that is inside of them. They don't really love who they are. Because if they did, I don't think they would have as many problems as they clearly perceive that they have. So in this experience, as much as it's difficult, painful, financially frustrating, you got to do things that you weren't planning on doing. There are things in your schedule that you're no longer going to be able to do uh, because of the car accident, because of the pain. You need to rest. I took two days off. Um, it's still, nevertheless, the reality. And we cannot fight the reality that we find ourselves in. The reality that we find ourselves in is a self-created reality. It is there to teach us more about ourselves if we are willing to hear the lesson. So for me, what I did ultimately is I tried to send a sense of forgiveness to that person that hit us, tried to send them some love, some healing, um, because I know that a person that would run into someone like this person did and take off like they did and not own up to their responsibilities to not say I am sorry for what I have done to not ask for forgiveness that person is in pain that person is suffering and that person needs some help and I don't know who they are I don't know where they are I don't know what they're doing right now but I do thank them. I thank them because they taught me something more about myself. I am now someone who is more connected to who I really am. Not some fake thing, you know, but who I really am, what I really feel on the inside. And that's the difference. It's the difference between being someone who is playing a victim and someone who takes responsibility for everything that happens to them even if it may not necessarily be my fault. So that's all I got for today's story uh, about my car accident incident um, and what I learned about it. Um, there's some other stuff that came out of it, but I want to save that for another video. I think it's, it's much more, um, you know, for another subject, for another um, topic. Um, but nevertheless, it's all part of an experience of transformation. Um, anytime that we accept responsibility for our life and we accept that we are the ones that can change our own destiny, that is a moment of transformation. And if we hold that within ourselves, we hold that energy within our being, we will constantly be in a mode of transformation, but towards the person who we ultimately know is already on the inside. So with that, I'm going to end this video. Again, everybody, if you haven't followed me on my social media pages, I'm on, uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm here on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to my channel here on YouTube, please do so, so you can get more Dose of Dave. Um, also, one last reminder, and, or announcement, I should say, uh, and I'm going to probably be saying this at the end of every Dose of Dave for the next two months, um, but I am finally launching a crowdfunder for my new comic, Confederate Monster. Um, I'm trying to get the first three issues printed. Um, a lot of people just want the, the physical books. So I, I really want to give people what they want. 
Um, so on February 9th, uh, a little less than a, uh, a month from today, uh, I'm gonna be launching that on Indiegogo. There's gonna be all kinds of fun stuff aside from the comics, some t-shirts, some hats, coasters, commissions. Um, I'm gonna do some other stuff that I don't really wanna talk about just yet. Um, but it's going to be super awesome. The, the whole thing is just going to be, I think, a great uh, campaign for any comic book lover, any horror story lover out there. Um, so be on the lookout for that coming soon. Okay. All right. As always, guys, I'm just going to do a little bit of dancing just to shake it off. I'm probably not going to move as abruptly as I usually do because my neck is still kind of recovering. But I'll do a little light, you know, kind of shuffle back and forth just to, you know, shake off some of these uh, emotions. Okay. So everybody have a good day and I'll talk to you soon.